Hey, and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing how to set up and make all the adjustments on this Bosch GCM 12SD. This is the Bosch 12 inch glide miter saw. So you can see this has that knuckle system versus the old rail system. So I'm gonna be making all the adjustments on this thing to make it perfectly square and work really well. Uh, out of the box, it did not cut square when it was on zero. It was off by like a degree and the bevel's not perfect either. So we're gonna get that stuff set up perfectly. Um, if you wanna see the video of the unboxing and me going through that, I'll put a card up here as well as a link in the description. There will also be links in the description for this saw, the blade, and some of the other tools that I've got uh, that I'm using today, as well as you could go to my website, borsalinocarpentry.com, and I have a tools page on there, which has all of my tools that I personally use and recommend. So uh, head over there. There'll be a link for that down in the description as well. So here we go. Let's set this thing up. All right, before we get into setup, let's talk about what we need here. You're gonna need some scrap wood. So I've got a one by 12 and a one by four. So in the instruction booklet, it says that you're gonna wanna use one of these. So you set this all the way to the end and we'll be able to use that up against the fence to check for square. And then, uh, like that up against the blade to check the blade bevel for square. And then you can pull this out and we'll be able to check the blade for 45 degrees. Now, while this might be a more accurate 45 degree, I usually like to do this with a speed square. I just find that um, it works better. The blade, you know, on the 45 degree angle, it's a little bigger. So I'll probably use both. I also have one of these monster speed squares. I might use it to check the angle. I'm not really sure yet. We'll, we'll see, I might get into that. And you could also use a framing square. So um, the only thing with all of these, I'm gonna say is I never trust them. So I always check both sides. So uh, I'm gonna check square this way and then I'll flip this to the other fence and check that way as well. All right, now some other things. Barsh sends this little fancy allen key with the saw to change the blade and to make all of these adjustments the only problem is it's made of such cheap metal that when i tried to change the blade it broke and then i put it in a wrench and tried to use this little nub and it broke again so that's out but it's a four and a six millimeter so you're going to need like an allen key or if you have loose allen wrenches whatever um you need a four and six millimeter Allen wrench. And then to make the adjustments for the bevel, you're going to need a 17 millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket. And you may or may not need an extension depending on if you have deep sockets or whatever you're using. Um, I think I'm gonna need the extension based on where the bolts are located on the back of the saw. And of course the socket set that these go into. Then you need an eight millimeter open end wrench to make the adjustments for the the set screws on the bevel. Uh, I don't have an eight millimeter, but five sixteenths is the next closest in standard size. And I checked it and it's, it works for what we need. You always wanna make sure that they're at least close enough because if they're too far off, you can strip the screw. Uh, luckily these screws move pretty freely back there, so it shouldn't really be a problem. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna take the guard off because when trying to set it, the guard's just in the way. So basically, uh, it's the same way that you would do it to take the blade off. So we're just going to do this. All right, we will put this back on. Just to show you, I had already made a test cut on this. So don't do this without the blade cover. you don't want to do that, right? So I made a cut. So the first thing I'm going to do, and if you can see that, it is pretty far off, right? Make sure you unplug the power before we do this. I'm actually going to set this down and then lock it in place so it's locked down so that I can mess with this. And then once you have it locked down, you're pretty much going to stay right there. And the blade guard's out of the way now so we can see the blade. And you're just gonna check with the square here and I can hear it and see it's touching out here, but not in the back. 
So first thing I got to do is take the four millimeter wrench and there's four set screws, two here and two on the other side here. And we're just going to loosen those guys up. Okay. And then that will make it so that you can move this thing around. See that whole thing's moving? So we're going to get the saw set and then we'll readjust where this thing goes. So you actually are going to need a Phillips head screwdriver to move this back once it's all set. So that's another tool we need. And this thing's pretty stiff, so it's not terribly easy to move. So it might take a while to get it lined up just right. And let's see here. It's pretty close. And then I'm gonna check it on the other side too. So hard to tell. Come back a hair. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it any better than that. So let's tighten these down. And I just plug the power back in quick. Let's make a quick cut just to check. Uh, it looks like it's gotta go farther over. Now, because it wasn't square, I wasn't sure maybe this was a little off, but that seems pretty much right on the money there. So that's not causing it. So I'll loosen these back up again a little bit. It's weird, I, I can't seem to get it with this. Maybe the square's not square. That is possible. So we'll check it with this guy and see how this one is. You know, that seems like it's touching out here, which means it has to go that way more. Okay, that is pretty close. I, I really don't know how I'm gonna get it better than that with the square, so. And let's make another test cut. All right, so it still looks like it's a little out, like it could go in a little more. Yeah, that side seems okay, so I don't know. Let's check it on the other side too. Oh yeah, I forgot about these little guys, flipper outer guys. All right, here's another way we can check. Let's just take this guy, cut it square, and we're gonna flip it right over like this and see how it looks on this side. So that's telling me it's tight towards the front here. I don't know if you can see that. So we might've moved it too far. And this is just a whole game of back and forth and trying to get it perfect. I think that's pretty good right there. Tighten that down. And now that I've got it squared off with a piece of wood, let's check it again with this here, just to see what it looks like. It's so hard to tell, really. If I do it that way, I can get it right up against the blade there. That looks pretty good, right? 
I think we're looking pretty good. Okay. All right, now we're just gonna lock this back down again and we're gonna start checking the bevels now that we're okay with the other way. We're gonna put this right there and check to see. All right, so this is probably gonna be impossible to see in the camera, but if I set that up there, I can see some daylight through the bottom here. And if I set it on the other side, yeah, it's open a little bit on the top. So this whole blade has to kick out a little bit. So these two little screws right here, if you can see them, are what are the stops for the 45 degree angle. These two screws are for the zero, so that's what we're at right now. And then this guy right here adjusts the, uh, the lever that allows it to bevel so you can loosen this. And actually it's way too tight right now so I'm gonna loosen that up first. Just to make this thing easier to use. And I am gonna need the extension because my wrench is gonna hit there. So I'm assuming lefty two seed right to pass it. Get a little looser guy. And then I'll check it. So that's good. So now it's much easier to unlock the bevel. So that big screw that I just adjusted, adjusts the tension on this. So now it's, it's much easier to use. There's still some tension behind it, but before I had to use two hands to get this thing to move. So that's much better. So the next step, it says to leave this in the up position. And then we're gonna switch the 10 millimeter screw, loosen both of these. It said one full turn at least, so. We'll get them pretty loose. Okay, so the next thing, there's two set screws right here. First thing it says to do is to loosen the bottom one completely. And I can't get my uh, thing in here, but if I tip this, oop, trying to pull the blade up. If I tip that over, okay, so we're gonna loosen this guy up down here, give it a couple turns. Tip the saw back up here. <clears throat> now we're just gonna use the square and you can see, I can see, I don't know if you can see, it's touching on the top. So we gotta get the saw to come back over some. Oh, that is not the right direction. Check it on both sides. All right, it's pretty close. So now we gotta tighten back down all the bolts that were back there. Okay, and once that's back, Lift it back up, lock that back down. I'm gonna grab my one by four and I'm gonna make a test cut here, standing it upright. And this should be perfectly square. And it is right on the money. Then we're gonna lift this back up and tip it over. Next, we're gonna be setting the 45 degree bevel. So I'm gonna pull my combination square apart. And here we go, let's check this. Remember, we gotta pull the fence out when you do 45 degrees. So pull that out on both sides. And it's the same process. We're just gonna set this thing. So it stays there and we're just gonna check this. I'm trying to get this in here so you can see it. So with the blade in there, it's still open on the bottom, so I gotta come back up with the set screw. The screws that I gotta adjust here are these two tiny guys right back in there. I think it's this one I gotta do right now, so I'm not gonna be able to do that and get the wrench and the camera in here, so I'll do that. All right, that's pretty good right there. All right, now to go to the right, we gotta just relieve that pressure a little bit push this to the, where it says zero to 45 right. 
and then that'll let us collapse it to the other side. Wow, tight quarters in there. You gotta lift the blade up, let that thing go in there and then stick it back in. Okay, so that one's gotta go up a little bit. Okay. I think that is perfect. Okay, so now that that is set, I can push this guy back up. And you so saw that just pop right back into place. And now we can set it back at our zero. Push this back down and we're good to go. Now something I noticed here on the right side, if you were gonna go make a cut and the fence, even though it's slid all the way out, it will hit. So when you're doing a right 45 degree bevel cut, you actually have to pull this fence all the way out and then you can make your cut which is kind of annoying to be honest on the left side we do not have that problem the bag does touch but it's not in the way so that'll be fine all right so before i go any farther i just want to put this blade guard back on i guess i should mention this is where you change the blade there's a little knob on the back you push and it locks the blade in the position and then you loosen that it's actually reverse thread so if you're going to do it, it's clockwise to loosen and counterclockwise to tighten. Let's throw this back on just so we can be safe. All right, so there's one last adjustment I wanna make. So when you pull this thing out, this glides really smooth, almost too smooth, like dangerously smooth. I don't have very much control over it. Let me lock this down. So right here on the knuckle, there's two little set screws here. And basically, I'm just going to take this four millimeter wrench here and tighten them up. And that added a little bit of resistance. See, it doesn't, it doesn't fall back on, my, on me anymore. So I have control over it. but it still glides nice and easy. Okay, so I think the last thing left to do is to set the stops right on zero because we made some adjustments. And this is very straightforward. You just loosen it up. Put it on zero. Tighten it up. You really could use a washer on there because it like just wants to move every time I turn the screwdriver. So it's almost like you gotta, you gotta like set it back and then as you tighten it, it'll turn onto the zero. Okay, so I think that's it for the Bosch Glide miter saw. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this saw. And again, there's links in the description for all this stuff. Don't forget to subscribe if you like these tool videos and uh, I'll see you on the next one.